Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to 3D Now. My name is Jack and this is a Mosaic Manufacturing Pellet 2 and Canvas Hub review. So hot right into the video, I'm lucky enough to test out the Pellet 2 and Canvas Hub from Mosaic Manufacturing. And if you didn't know already, they make multicolor and multi-material 3D printing products for 3D printers. So Mosaic originally made the Palette Plus before creating their new product line of what they sell now. Mosaic created a whole new ecosystem of multi-material and multicolor 3D printing products, including the Palette 2 and the Palette 2 Pro, the Canvas Hub, and Canvas 3D, their online slicing software. This ecosystem of products is one of the easiest ways to print multicolor or multi-material with a single extruder 3D printer. Now I'm currently reviewing the Palette 2, but they do make a pro version as well, and that uses their Splice Core Pro made of milled aluminum and can splice filament at 20% faster speeds. It also has a two year warranty and spare parts, but that machine is made for professionals, so I'm going to be looking at the regular Palette 2. Unboxing the Palette 2, the first thing I'm struck by is the amazing packaging. It's funny, but it looks like a retail product or an Apple product with a modern and simple unboxing experience. I might say that this is the best unboxing experience of any 3D printing accessory I have tested so far. Inside the box, the Palette 2 comes with every accessory to print multicolor parts. It comes with the Palette 2, of course, the power supply that plugs into the wall with different country adapters, the SD card, a USB cable, some tools, multiple spare parts, different size PTFE tubes, different stand and mounting options for the Palette 2, a four spool filament holder, the manual, and even some stickers. I can add those to my collection. So putting the Palette 2 all together is really simple. Following the manual, all that is needed to do is plug in the power supply, attach the correctly sized outgoing PTFE tube, attach the extruder clip to your printer's extruder, and insert the SD card. Now the way a Pellet 2 works is really interesting, and its engineering is super cool. It uses four stepper motors that pull in the four filaments, then feeds in one filament to the cut wheel that cuts the filament and feeds that into the splice core, where it heats up the filament ends, pushes them together, and cools them down. This creates a new strand of multicolor or multi-material filament that gets fed into the buffer zone and then out through the scroll wheel of the Palette 2. The Palette 2 basically splices up to four filaments together into one strand of filament, which is then fed into a single extruder 3D printer. The length of each filament splice is precisely calculated to sync up with the G-code of the 3D printer. So when the printer wants to switch colors, it makes a purge block that transitions from one color to the next during the print. This process allows for multicolor and multi-material 3D printing with a single extruder, but it does waste a ton of filament and takes a really long time to print your objects. The Palette 2 itself has a few ports on the left side, four holes on the bottom for filament to feed into, an SD card slot at the top, a hole to fit the outgoing PTFE tube in, and the front panel which can be removed by magnets to reveal the inner working components of the machine. I have to say I find myself watching the Palette 2 slice and melt together filament. It is a really neat and mesmerizing process. In addition, it has a touchscreen on the front that can control the settings and print modes. The main mode is printing a multicolor object, but there are also some fun modes including random colors and gradient. Now, in order to print with the Palette 2, there are two files needed. A G-code file for the 3D printer, of course, and a Palette 2 file so it can make filament for the 3D printer. The hard part is getting the Palette 2 and 3D printer to sync up perfectly, and that is where the Canvas Hub comes into the picture. The Canvas Hub links your 3D printer with the Palette 2 and allows for better prints and control of your printer online. Inside the box, the Canvas Hub comes with the hub itself, a power supply, some USB cables, Velcro patches, the manual, and more stickers. The Canvas Hub is based from a Raspberry Pi Zero and runs OctoPrint with some special plugins. If you open the Canvas Hub, inside there's a Pi Zero with a breakout board PCB that has four USB Type A ports, a DC power connector, and a power status light. So, because the Canvas Hub is running OctoPrint, you can control and monitor your prints from anywhere. 
It has special plugins that gives Canvas Hub the cool website theme and the ability to control and sync the palette too with your 3D printer. Now, I have to give a ton of props to Mosaic as they made these plugins open source and available to everybody. So you can just get your own Raspberry Pi with Octoprint and create your own Canvas Hub by installing their plugins online. To connect the Canvas Hub, plug in the power cord, then the palette 2 and your 3D printer through the USB ports. Next, go onto the Canvas Hub website on your Wi-Fi network and select the ports corresponding to your 3D printer and palette 2. Now you can automatically print from anywhere. So you might be thinking, how and where do you create these special files for the G-code and the palette 2 from printing multicolor? This is where the next piece of Mosaic software comes in and it's called Canvas 3D, your online 3D slicer. So Canvas, as they call it, allows users to slice multicolor and multi-material models online, choose colors for each part, and then directly send that file to the Canvas hub to be printed. If you haven't guessed it already, everything's connected together in the Mosaic ecosystem. The online slicer allows you to create printer and setting profiles for ease of use. And once your profiles are set up, simply drag the multi-part models into the software and it will automatically group all the parts together. The size, rotation, settings, etc. can be adjusted just like any other slicer. Finally, you can choose which color should be printed for each individual part of the model. There are four colors for the palette too, and you can simply select the color and then drag it onto the model itself. It's super easy. Once you preview the print, press one button and it sends the files to the Canvas Hub. This way, Canvas Hub controls the two files for your printer and palette too. When you go to the Canvas Hub website, the file appears, and then you can click print on that file. Instructions will then appear on the palette 2 screen to show you how to start the print. On the Canvas Hub website, you can see the print progress, the current G-code view, the sync between the printer and palette 2, and much, much more. Mosaic tried to make the process as intuitive and easy as possible. Because the 3D printer and palette 2 are connected, Palette 2 can sync layers and splice the filament more accurately. It does this with things called pings and pongs. The 3D printer and Palette 2 exchange pings and pongs throughout the print to allow the filament splices and the 3D printer to stay in calibration. This active feedback tells the Palette 2 how much filament the printer thought it used so far and how much filament was actually used by the printer. Palette 2 can adjust its splicing on the fly to create better prints. Also, after each print is finished, Palette 2 asks if you want to save the calibration data for future prints. So over time, it will learn from each print and get better with your printer. Again, everything in the ecosystem is connected. You can even monitor the pings and pongs through the Canvas Hub website. Now that I covered how everything works, how does it actually print and what are the results like? Well, I have to be honest and it did take a little bit of time to get working consistently. I first tried to print on my Ender 3 and for some reason it was missing pings and the colors were all messed up. This is where I contacted their customer support team and sent them an email with pictures and my problems. I got an email right back with a bunch of suggestions on what to do next. In addition, they have an amazing online support center and forum. The support articles are very lengthy and the website is super deep with troubleshooting guides and information. They have almost every possible problem you might run into and how to fix it. The support articles have video tutorials, pictures, and diagrams of what to do. I was super impressed with the support that Mosaic offers. Between the emails and the online support pages, I decided that it would be quickest to try and print on a different 3D printer. So I switched to my CR10 and then it worked really well. The first couple of prints were calibration prints of the Mosaic 4-color keychain and also the 4-color earbud case to get the palette 2 set up correctly. Once I finished these and felt comfortable with the printer and palette 2, I began to print in multiple colors. The first real model I printed was a Moai head. I realized after that it was a bad idea to print with green and black filament because it takes a lot of printing to transition to and from black filament, but that can be fixed by increasing the transition length in the canvas slicer. This was my first long print, so you can see that at the bottom of the model there are colors that were mixed up a little bit. But because my 3D printer and Palette 2 are connected with the Canvas Hub, the Palette 2 realized that the printer was not printing the correct colors and actively changed the splicing throughout the print, which resulted in the rest of the print coming out really, really well. 
Next, I tried printing a four-color owl, which turned out well, except for the top of the head was cut off and a few mix-up colors. And that was because the palette 2 did not make enough filament to finish the top of the print, which I realized was a setting problem in my end on my printer profile, which I then changed for future prints. The color mix-ups were only one or two layers because in the previous print I saved the calibration data and the palette 2 learned about the characteristics and the way my printer prints. I then tried to use the calibration data I gathered from the longer prints to print the mosaic keychain again, and it turned out to be absolutely perfect and was the best keychain I printed so far. Every layer was perfect and all the colors were in the correct spots. After that I went onto Mosaic's My Mini Factory page and found this really cool 4 color earth model. Because this model had 4 colors and it's pretty big, the purge block was really heavy It actually used more filament to print the purge block than to print the actual model. Also, this earth model took the entire day to print, but the results are totally worth it. This print came out really well and all layers and colors were placed perfectly in the model. There was a really small color mix up at the very bottom of the model, but every print on the palette 2 gets better and better. The machine learns from every print and gets better over time. Next, I printed another object from the Mosaic My Mini Factory page, and it was a Squirtle. So this turned out great, with the four colors printing perfectly. There was another layer at the bottom that was mixed up, and I thought the printer would learn from the previous prints, and it appeared that it did not. So I emailed Mosaic on how to fix the issue, and they gave me some really good tips and tricks for my next print that would hopefully fix the one layer mix up towards the bottom of the prints. Next in line was the 3D Benji, but I wanted to try a different printing mode. So I tried the random mode in the palette 2, which just made random lengths of the four filament colors. I then just printed a normal G-code file on my 3D printer, which used that random colored filament from the palette 2. It turned out to be absolutely fantastic, and I love the color combination. The stripes of colors look super cool, and it's definitely a unique print. After that, I used the same random splicing mode on the palette 2 to print a gnome, with the random mode, there is no purge block because the printer does not have to switch precisely to different colors throughout the print. That makes the random mode a lot faster to print with and wastes no filament. Again, the gnome looks amazing and is definitely one of the cooler prints I have done. After seeing what cool print results the random mode can produce, I tried to print my 3D Now Maker coin. Also, the colors were green, gray, white, and black, the colors of my channel. The coin turned out to be so cool, and is truly the coolest maker coin I have ever printed so far. It is all the 3D now colors and makes an awesome pattern throughout the print. Finally, I wanted to use another print mode to see what else the palette 2 can do. I decided to try the gradient mode, which transitions smoothly between two colors of filament. And what better model to print with a gradient mode than a twisted vase? I actually printed two vases with the color transitioning between gray and white. And the vases look so cool, especially with the gradual color change. Again, this mode used no purge block, so it printed extremely fast compared to the other prints from the palette too. I'm truly impressed with the print results and variety of modes on the palette too. As you can see, once you have the calibration settings dialed in, the Mosaic ecosystem can produce some really fantastic multicolor and multi-material prints. Needless to say, the Mosaic products are truly revolutionary in the 3D printing space. With the update from the Palette Plus, Mosaic is trying to make their products easier to use for the 3D printing community. That may seem easy to do, but with a newer technology like the Palette 2, it can be very difficult to achieve that goal. Overall, I think Mosaic is doing a really good job trying to make multicolor and multi-material prints available for everybody. Of course, there are going to be hiccups along the way, but that is what happens with any new technology. From my experience with the Mosaic ecosystem, the workflow seems to be absolutely perfected. From slicing files, sending it right to Canvas Hub, and sending that from Canvas Hub right to Palette 2 and your 3D printer, it cannot get any easier. On the other hand, there were a few problems that I faced along the way. An example of this is when I unbox a Palette 2, it asked me to update the firmware. So I followed the instructions on the website exactly but it always failed to update correctly. To fix that problem, I literally had to take apart the entire Palette 2 to get to the main motherboard, use a shunt jumper to short two pins on the PCB, and then install firmware three times. Someone should definitely not have to do that. In addition, the Canvas Hub is just a Raspberry Pi Zero, 
which is a good idea in theory, but Pi Zeros are underpowered in terms of their actual performance and electrically. Pi Zeros are cheap, but they are extremely slow. For example, my Canvas Hub takes upwards of 10 minutes to boot up. Also, the Pi Zero cannot supply enough power to power a webcam or basically anything else. I was able to get past these problems, but I hope in the future that Mosaic can make sure that everybody can get a Palette 2 and Canvas Hub and have it working right out of the box. I want to give a big thank you to Mosaic Manufacturing for sending out these products to me for a review. Of course, links for all these products are going to be down in the video description below. The Palette 2 is priced at $5.99 usually, but right now it's on sale for $4.99, and the Canvas Hub is $59. So, thanks for watching this video, please give it a big thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe for more 3D printing videos like this, comment down below if you have any questions, and I will see you all in the next video.